I am very excited to introduce you to a former employee of mine here on this episode of the Business Family Marriage Podcast. He worked with us at Video Creators for about three years and then about a little over a year ago went and launched his own business. And it, it has definitely had an impact on him, his marriage, and his family. And we're going to talk about that in a little interview I'm going to highlight for you here in just a second. Uh, we talked about uh, some of the big struggles we have in terms of how do you shut down the brain when it's time to switch from being in business owner mode and in uh, manager boss mode to father mode, husband mode, family family mode. And, and when you're with your family, how do you turn off the brain so you can be present with those people in, in, in your family and serve them really well? And then that leads into a couple different stories that he shares about, about how he's learning to, to think through lessons at his business to really serve his family better um, and, and his kids and lead them, as well as how this has impacted his relationship with his wife and how they've overcome some of the common struggles that I know you have faced, I have definitely faced based and in communication with spouses as we are growing businesses. And in this episode, you'll also hear the most important question that I ask my wife, my kids, my team members, the people who report to me that I think really helps foster better communication and better relationships at the same time, just with this one question. So a lot of good stuff coming up. Let me introduce you to Lennon. We'll cut to our interview here, and then I'll be back at the end with some wrap-up thoughts. Uh, so here's me and Lennon. Welcome to the Business Family Marriage Podcast with Tim Smoyer. This is his personal podcast where he shares what he's learning about growing a seven-figure business while also raising seven children and deepening his relationship with his wife at the same time. He shares what he's learning, what's worked, what hasn't, what he's trying next to grow a fruitful business, family, and marriage. For more on that today, here's Tim. Lennon, hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, in the hotel room, we never sat this close. I, I know. <laughs> I know. We, on purpose. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your journey and your story. Um, as and, and there's a lot to that in terms of like uh, as a dad, as a business owner, as an employee. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your story from uh, being a musician to then YouTube and then now what you're, what you're doing now and uh, give it an idea of like your business journey. Yeah. Well, that pretty much summed it up. So oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, st I started as a touring musician when I was probably 21. We would tour like 150 days a year and it was a lot, you know, but at that time it was like, okay, Jamie and I are dating. It's like not as big of a deal. And then we got married and then it became a little bigger of a deal. And, um, and then we had a kid. And when we had our first kiddo, I was immediately going to go to Europe for two months. Hmm. And over there, I just became like completely, I was depressed. I was just dealing with a lot of anxiety. Um, to be frank, I was like becoming a social alcoholic and just like two different people because mm -hmm. I just couldn't hold it all together in mm -hmm. one space. Mm -hmm. So I left and then, um, you left Europe or you left the band or you left, I, I left both. Okay. Yeah. So I stayed, I stayed on the, I stayed on the tour, finished that tour. And then I left the band right kind of on the end of our cycle album cycle is, as as we call it in the biz. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, that was the hardest decision I ever made because I like put 10 years of my life into this thing, you know, and what's that sunk cost fallacy or whatever, you know, like, are you walking away from something that you're finally going to hit like a big thing on? And so it was an interesting time. Um, but I immediately was able to walk into a situation where I started doing production work and recording work for bands. And at the same time, I started making YouTube videos for musicians to kind of help with the business side of things. Mm. And wasn't long after that that I met you. Um, well, I'll say I I met you. You didn't meet me, as YouTube goes. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, um, you went through one of our courses, um, yep. and then we met at a breakfast meetup that we did. At Vid that, that, Yeah, that video creator toasted after that. And then we hired you, what, a few months later or something like that to be a YouTube channel? It probably would have been like six months or so later, yep. Okay. And so jumped on the team, was with you for three years, and learned a ton about like what, you know, um, marketing and business and um, I consider you to be a great mentor in my life in, in return in, or in terms of that and in terms of just like seeing what it's like to try and do the family thing well like I always respected that the culture of video creators was family first mm -hmm. right because uh, I never it just couldn't it, it felt like it couldn't be that with most things and so um and so I left because I was annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you were, you had this vision for your family, for yourself. Like I, you want to be your own boss. You want to yeah. have your own business and you are growing it on the side for most of your time at video creators, if not all of it. Right. Uh, yeah. Like tinkering. It was like having a car in the garage, you know, where you're just like messing with it once in a while. I'd make a video and then I decided like, okay, I think I want to try this. And I remember talking to you about it and you're like, okay. And so then I just kind of went a little deeper into it and I was spending all my free time yeah, uh, working on it. So then I, I left in beginning of 2021, January 1st. Launched out full time on your own gig. Yeah. And nice. here we are today um, where we've worked with, I think a little over 50 clients last year, which is great. And then, um, We've seen some of our clients make six figures off their art and some people really growing, you know, their communities around the work they make and starting to really more than anything, like what I want for people is like, how do they have like joy in the work that they're doing? Yeah. Um, Tell us about your business. It's, it's a stop the starving artist is yep. what your business is called. And what do you do for people there? Yeah. So we help artists to leverage their individuality, to grow communities that will support their work, both emotionally and monetarily. Hmm. So um, community is kind of my favorite thing. So yeah. it's like, how do you start to build um a community that supports your work yeah yeah and you were good at that because that video creator is part of your a big part of your job was it was running our community our membership stuff mm -hmm. and, and things like that which you did a great job with so you've been in your own business now as of this recording um for two years a year and a couple months yeah oh yeah we're in 2023 now okay <laughs> so uh, over no, a year. so I left in 2022, not 2021. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's been uh, a little over a year now. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, <laughs> making it for the first year. <laughs> yes, we did it. Yeah. When you look back over the, your season of growing the business and then launching into it full time and then being in it this past uh, past year, what are the, some of the challenges that have popped up for you in terms of managing the business and growing the business while also trying to be a dad? And husband, um, oh yeah, and tell us a little bit about your family. What does that composition look like? And yeah, so um, I have a wife, and she's an illustrator and a, just a awesome, brilliant, creative person. And then we have two girls, um, six and nine years old. Yeah. Cool. What are some of the challenges that came up for you in this past year in trying to grow the business and being a husband and a father and a dad all at the same time? My brain wants to go to some snarky comment, so I'm turning it off. <laughs> so the biggest challenge is sort of the ongoing challenge, which I'm sure that you can relate with, which is turning it off. You know, The brain off or the business off or the family off? The, biz the business in the brain yeah. when you're like in the season of just trying to get your legs underneath you consistently. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a constant struggle to, to, to be like, okay, it's five o'clock shut her down mm. you know um and we've gotten good at it in some instances and not so good at it in others you know but that that's the biggest struggle that i personally deal with is like just always thinking about the next thing that needs to be done it becomes a challenge for i think for the kids more than for jamie for my wife but the because, but but they're really good about we we've set some parameters to say okay, um, X time, you have full permission if you see dad on his phone to like mm -hmm. tell him to set it down you know like, mm -hmm. 
So we've set some some boundaries there to be able to allow them to speak into what they need as well, which has been super helpful. So we'll hear, you know, we'll hear from them like, dad, I need you to like, I really want to cuddle or I really want to spend time. And when I hear that, it's like, okay, I need to really pay attention. Um, and so we have set some, some of those guidelines that have been super helpful, but you know, I, I think the impact becomes when we allow them to maybe distract themselves, um, in other ways. And that, that's when we have to kind of recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And so we try to meet once a week and, and just chat about stuff. So is that, has that been the most productive part for your family, a uh, uh, solution for your family in terms of like, how do I shut it down? How do I make sure I'm a business owner and uh, a coach to these, to these artists here, but I'm a dad and a husband over here. And how do you flip that switch just by talking about it once a week or, or, how, um, yeah, how do you flip that switch? <laughs> yeah, I don't always. <laughs> or do you not yet? I don't always. So on, yeah, yeah. I, I think um, there, there's a couple things that I've been trying, and what I realize is that on the on the days where I approach the day from a panic, that's when it's the hardest, right? So if if I can even treat my day sort of like all right, this block of time, and I'm going to take a little time for myself here. If I can just even, for instance, you know, hey, I'm working on a video or like content junk today. So if I spend some time writing and then I take 10 minutes to go take a walk, like that's sort of setting my brain up to kind of like, yeah, keep, like a little transition. Yeah. And so if I'm doing that through the day, then it's easier for me in the evening. But what I find is when I'm beating myself up or like sort of grinding it out, like that's when it's harder to shut it off. Yeah. Yeah. So you're giving yourself a little buffer in between like rather than trying to go with a, a switch from one to the other, <clears throat> it's more of a like, OK, I got to like prepare myself before I go from one zone to the other zone. Yeah. Like, and doing that five, six times through the day, not just mm -hmm. when I go to the family, like if mm -hmm. I'm treating even, you know, OK, now I'm going to go edit like I'm going to take 10, 15 minutes and like maybe go talk to Jamie or do something different, yeah. you know, like that keeps my brain in this space of like, we're moving at a pace, things are yeah. going, you know, instead of panic. Yeah. I think there's two things that have helped me with that. One is if I find that if I get it all out of my head before I go over to the family or vice versa, like I've got a whole bunch of family work home projects we got to do or something, but I'm about to go back into my office. Um, uh, we have a whiteboard, uh, right by our, our front door before because our my office is across the driveway and our garage so uh, we have a whiteboard and my wife and the kids our whole family uses it like stuff we need to remember or do mm. and we just write it on there so once it's written on there now i'm like okay i don't have to keep trying to I remember that. that so i can get that out and vice versa coming back over i'll just before i come back into the home <clears throat> here's all the stuff i'll just put it in my reminders app or uh, on a note somewhere and just kind of list it i dm myself on slack a lot <laughs> so that's cool yeah uh, just kind of keep stuff there because that slack's always open anyway for the team so it's just an easy place for me to just jot notes once it's out of my head i find that <clears throat> i do a little bit better with transitioning mm -hmm. the other thing is a little bit higher level um is that I found that when, and this doesn't always work well, but generally speaking, if I have a bigger vision for my family than I have for my business, I find that the family ends up consuming more of my thoughts and my time and my priorities. And then what I'm doing in the business, I'm doing that in order to serve my family. And it's yeah. there, like what I'm doing in the business is here to serve my family's vision. But if they're, if, but I, and so that way it's not like a, work life balance is not this bucket, that bucket of, of like two separate categories in my life. It's really one. And I'm like flowing from, uh, one focus point of that vision to a different focus point of that vision. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Right. So I find that if, yeah, if I think of the, of my work in the business in, in general as something that's helping us accomplish our family's mission and vision, then it's, it doesn't feel like I need to switch gears as much when I go back from one to the other. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And I, I guess I'm probably poor at that part of it, I think, right now because we're in sort of that yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yes, situation. there is a there is a phase where you just like got to get her done. And that was definitely a part of my story, too, is like, I'm sorry, wife, I'm just going to be gone for like a long time yeah. <laughs> in the basement, just cranking through stuff. But I do I do love the. The, the the mission you know because that that that's a big thing for us too like we've we've talked about that with the kids like that our 
sort of, you know, the simplest way to say it is like, we want to help people be the best versions of themselves. And, um, because that's just how we like to, to be, we like to ask questions. We like to have deeper conversations with people. Like it's, it's, it's really fun for us. And so, um, the business is totally that. Yeah. And it's, I think the kids really see that. Um, and Jamie really sees that. So her support is uncanny. Like she's just all on, all in. She believes really heavily in what we're doing. So that helps a ton, you know? Sure. Yeah. And I, and I know you believe deeply in what you're doing too, both for the people you're serving as well as the impact it has on, on your family. So even though there is a hierarchy of needs, um, there is a time to like, to grind and push not perpetually but to say like hey this is our debt this is our time like this time next year or two months from now mm-hmm. or whatever the case might be and then um that we're gonna that we're gonna push uh because there's very practical needs that we need to come mm-hmm. out come out of this but you're still doing it for your family like you're still yeah. like a vision there and i think sometimes it's easy for us to get lost and like have our hearts captured more by our work and our business than it is by our family. And uh, an interesting thought experiment I like to do sometimes, which I think is kind of impractical to be honest, but uh, what if dad spent just as much time thinking about managing and growing a fruitful family mm-hmm. as they do a business, mm-hmm. right? Like what would the world look like yep. if we did that? I, I think it's impractical, but I do think it's like interesting, at least at poking at what's captured our hearts as, as dads. And a thousand percent. And yeah. So, so over this past year, you have undoubtedly learned and started developing even a lot of new skills that you didn't have before, yeah. right? What are some of those skills and what kind of impact has developing those skills in the business then had on how you manage and grow a fruitful family? Yeah, I think uh, the the most interesting thing that I've uncovered is um, is more coaching skills um like how how to take somebody from being in a place of of kind of like fear and frustration and um to kind of opening it up and and zooming it way out and and then coming back into like okay so you know you're equipped to solve this problem um and i'm not here to give you an answer i'm just here to try to help you find what you think that is. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's been such a fun thing to do with our kids too. Cause they, for, I'll I'll give an example. Like, um, (laughs) they were missing the bus. Like one week they missed it three, three out of five days. And I was ticked. (laughs) So I was like, they're like homeschool us, please. (laughs) (laughs) Basically. Yes. And so, um, on the third day that they missed it, you know, of course, Jamie's like, guys, come on, you got to get ready. And I'm like, five minutes, you know, we're just like, it's like chaos. And I just came to this place where I was like, okay, what, how would I handle this with an adult? You know, what, what would that look like? So, um, we got in the car and what broke the camel's back was my youngest, you know, she's still in a car seat and she like, I'm driving out of the driveway and she goes, dad. And I turned around and she goes, you have to buckle me up. <laughs> and I was like, that's it. I'm done. So I, I just stopped the car and I was like, okay, three out of five days we've missed the bus this week. We obviously understand that's not a good thing. I've tried to give you plenty of slack here to like do what you need to do and be aware. Mom and dad are getting anxious and uptight. I'm sure you don't like that. We don't like that. Do you guys like that? Like, what do you think? No. I mean, it's, I don't like that you guys are like, sounds like you're yelling, you know, and our yelling is like, Hey, well, I am. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> so sorry. That's not funny, <laughs> but, but it is kind of funny. Yeah. So they were, they're like, no, 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 we don't like it. I was like, okay, so you know, what are the consequences then? Like what should be done about this? And one of them goes, well, I think we shouldn't have screen time for two days. And I was like, beautiful done (laughs) and the other one goes shut up (laughs) and the other one goes and I don't think we should have any friends over for a week and I was like okay sounds great so that's the consequence six and nine and I thought that my kids were like I don't know (laughs) (laughs) so I (laughs) think exactly so kids will learn I guess (laughs) yeah I just asked them what they wanted to the consequence to be and they haven't missed the bus since Hmm. and ownership of it 
Yeah. yeah. And on the flip of that, there was one day that it got really, and we try to do acknowledgement. So if one of them is doing well, like I'll say like, I just want you to know that I really see that you're doing that. And I appreciate that you're doing that. And, um, and so they almost missed the bus one day and I was like, okay, just reminding you of your consequence, you know, not uptight, like whatever. And then, uh, our oldest Breda, she in the, on the walk into the bus stop, she goes, I just want to acknowledge you dad for reminding me of the consequence. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's something that I totally learned through mm. working with so many people, you yeah. know? Yeah. I love how growing a fruitful business has so many impact, like has such an impact and can have an impact and always, but I think what we're trying to do is intentionally like, let's do the business in order to impact our family positively, not sacrifice the family for the sake of the business. So yeah. the other way around. Right. And so what you're pointing out is the, are these skills that, that we've developed that, uh, really make the family a fruitful place. That's great. Um, if this question is too personal, feel free to just deflect. It okay. doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Uh, but I'm curious if you want to go there, how, being a business owner for the past year has impacted your relationship with your wife and your marriage. Yeah. Uh, what, what uh, for other people who might be in a similar spot, like what, what impact has this had positive or, or negative or both? Yeah. So I, I think I can't talk about this year without like a- acknowledging all the years leading up to this. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause in the, in the days of, of me being a touring musician, what our life looked like was I would leave for six or eight weeks and then she would get into this rhythm that was without me. And then I would come in and disrupt that rhythm. And so like we were both sort of shifting our lives completely around. And so it just never felt comfortable and it, it created a lot of tension and and we, we weren't good at communicating. And, um, excuse me. And so that, that was like the biggest problem for us is like not, is not seeing what the other one was doing as spiteful or not checking the boxes or not like keeping score, you know, cause we used to do a lot of that. And so the, the biggest shift for us has been to really talk about what the other person needs. Hmm. Um, so we don't do it as much now, but we're getting back into it a little bit because we saw like we had a little tension like a week ago and Jamie's like, I wonder if we should bring out back the meetings. I was like, yeah, cause we were doing every Wednesday night we'd meet for 15 minutes mm-hmm. and just say, what are you going through this week? And what can I do to serve you in that? Yeah. Um, and that was the biggest shift for us because I was always she did it too, but like, I can only speak for me. Like I was always sort of assuming what I thought she was dealing with and not like really understanding it, you know, and that just created animosity around like, well, she should have done this or why am I, you know, why am I having to deal with that? And so seeing the full story of what's happening in her mind and, you know, we all go through the days without actually seeing what the other, uh, what our significant other is doing, you know, because, we're working on our business and they're maybe working on things with the family or, you know, for her, she's doing multiple projects. So it's like, I just had to actually listen to like what was going on. And so, um, what started to happen was we would show up then to serve each other better Mm -hmm. rather than, and, and it would be reciprocated rather than like just showing up and expecting them to do something for me. It was like, I heard you, I know what you need, I'm gonna do that thing. And then the other like pays it back tenfold. You know, it's like a really, it's a much simpler yeah. thing. Does that mean it's easy all the time? Heck no. But like, I would say our relationship is the best it's been because of yeah. just that alone. Yeah, Dan and I, I learned this through business stuff too, is having good communication processes and scheduled times to communicate in in a business we call that like a business meeting or mm-hmm. team meeting or like one-on-ones or something like that yeah and i was like i need to carry this over to my family like you need to have like a one-on-one with with my wife you know yeah. once a week not to talk about like uh like talk about the state of affairs and business part of of running the family mm-hmm. you know so we do that monday nights and our um and we do part of it as a as our date night and i know some people are like don't think you don't make some we're like well 
we're fine. Yeah, you know, whatever that, works that, for that you. That works well for us. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it doesn't kill the romance, usually. Um, it's a, a un, uninterrupted time. We get away, and because we're out of the house, having a good meal or doing something different, like just being a different environment for those conversations makes the conversations go differently, too. But um, so, yeah, same thing. I We, we noticed that... I'm just focused on what's happening in my world and while I'm at my office and she's focused on what's happening in her world in the home. And then, and then I come in and she f- doesn't forget, just doesn't think that I have no idea what's happening in her world mm-hmm. or what I'm stepping into or, or what's going on and vice, vice versa. And so we end up putting these expectations on each other. Why don't you just, or how come you can't, you know, type yep. of things or I want you to. And, and because we've all, According to our perspectives, you've just been sitting in your office all day, right? And like yeah. and you've just been chilling at home all day, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and then, so it's good to like, oh, okay, that's what's going on in your world. That makes more sense. Yes. Uh, and then that question that you asked, or similar version of it, anyway, that I ask uh, both people on my team and our one on ones, as well as uh, with my wife and with my kids, as I feel like really important is, what do you need from me? Yeah. You're like what that that's like is there anything you need for how, how and it doesn't mean that i'm going to do whatever they say mm-hmm. it just means like let me hear like what and if i can do it i want to do it if it's an unrealistic expectation be like oh wow like i get how that would help i understand i don't um what if we tried it this way and yeah there's always a compromise like you can yeah. find yeah so it's like i need you to do the family full-time and the business full-time while i go to tahiti i'm like mm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's let's talk about that. that I'm all it. about you getting away, but like let's <laughs> let's figure out how we and we do that. Dana does do a, a personal retreat about once or twice a year. Just gets an Airbnb, not not Tahiti. I don't even, you know, we never done that that type of trip. Tahiti, but, Ohio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but that and that is important. I haven't done that. So I, now I think about it, like I don't take personal. Do you do personal retreats? I'll do one a year for like four days. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, she does a, about one or two a year for about two or. three three days yeah um, interesting it cool. is it's a good it's a good it's a good thing um and i think stepping out of because it, it 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 is too easy sometimes to be like because you know i think there's always a weird thing when you're doing when you're growing your own business or you're doing something that you really care about you know um work isn't work by the standard that the world sort of views work, right? Which is like, it's gotta be hard and grind it out. Like it's freaking hard, but it's just a different kind of hard. Yeah. And so I think that that can also show up sometimes. Like you said, it looks like, well, you're just at a conference hanging out right yeah, now. You know? And it's like, yeah, I am, which is a blessing. Going to parties and <laughs> stuff. I am, but I'm shaking hands and I'm trying to right, but it'll all generate like, resources for the family. Yes, exactly. So yeah. um, it's really, it's an interesting lifestyle to be entrepreneurial in any way because I think um, it can it can be if somebody is feeling victimized in some way and this doesn't even need to be your spouse this can be friends right I've seen friends be like well you've got it good you know I'm like do I yeah <laughs> I no. grass is always greener on the other side yeah I've, I've heard someone said the grass is greener wherever you water it yeah yeah I've heard like, that. I love that that makes more sense yeah yeah where people can find out more about you and what you're up to yeah uh, stop the starving artist.com cool okay. thanks Tim I think the key takeaway for me from what Lennon was sharing in this conversation is I loved how he asked his kids, how do we solve this? Like he asked them to participate in the problem solving process. And we didn't really talk about it in the episode, but it stood out to me that like we do that a lot of time in our businesses, don't we? Like we we hire people to solve problems <laughs> for us in our business. Uh, but at the but at least we're like working with them and, and we're having meetings together and we're all tackling problems together. We're inviting other people to join into our business and help us solve problems. That's part of why you have team members. And so we tackle problems together. And I and I know we do that a lot in in the in the in the business, but we don't 
at least I don't always do that as much with my kids in the home. I think my wife and I tackle problems together. Um, but I don't even, I don't think about it as much from the kids. I think about it more of like, well, here's the plan. Here's what we're going to do. And I love that Lennon was like, you know, you know, I just asked my kids, how are we going to address this? What is this going to look like? How can we do better? And the kids came up with solutions. I do think, I did try that once with my kids and their response was like nothing, you know, because they didn't really want to deal with any consequences. But I could see that their wheels were churning and that they were thinking about it. And so I think I need to do that more often. It's like, here's the problem. What do you guys think? And uh, so that, that was that was a big that was a big takeaway for me. So I'm gonna be thinking about that and and trying that a few times here as those situations arise. I would love to hear what your key takeaways are. Uh, you can go to businessfamilymarriage.com slash voicemail. There's a link in the show notes here. And I'd love to hear you. Like send us a, a, a voicemail message of you asking your questions or giving your responses, your ideas, your tips, your advice for other business owners who are trying to build not only a fruitful business, but also a fruitful marriage and family at the same time time. That is definitely a challenge I know a lot of us face. So thanks for being a part of this journey along with us. And I will see you guys again next time for our next Business Family Marriage podcast episode. We have another interview with maybe someone you've heard of before if you are at all in the uh, in the YouTube space. Uh, that'll, that'll be a fun one as well. So we'll see you guys in the next one. See you then. Bye.